Hi everybody, this is Centre Pass from London Pulse, the brand new podcast produced with anything but footy. London Pulse is London's only Vitality Netball Super League side, but we're much more than that, and in this podcast we aim to explain why and how. I'm Sam Bird, the CEO and Head Coach of London Pulse. Welcome to episode two. If you're listening for the first time, thank you for joining us, but don't forget to go back and download episode one too. But in this episode, we want to talk about things that don't get talked about enough, periods and sport, and the challenges women and girls in particular face playing sport. We'll hear from two London Pulse partners who are making a difference. We understand also how products need to move, so where they need to stretch and flex a bit more because not all females have the same, you know, chest or the same quad sizes. It it really does vary. It does affect them. It does affect, like I said, their well-being, their participation. It's something that this product, we feel, can definitely change that. We'll hear from one of the Pulse players. The opposite sex just don't get it in, a, in the nicest possible way. It's just something that they've never had to deal with, will never have to deal with. And yeah, it really can affect performances. And talk netball and about the possibility of it being in the Olympics. This is Centre Pass from London Pulse. A recent Women in Sports survey showed that 64% of girls will drop out of playing sport by the age of 16. 42% of 14 to 16 year olds say that their period stops them taking part in physical activity at school. At London Pulse, we're dedicated to connecting with our communities in London, so we've teamed up with Iceni, which makes specially designed underwear to ensure the stress and pressure of periods doesn't stop girls and women from participating in netball and the sports they love. Here's co owner Vanessa Smith. We specialise in period wear for sport. So we design and tailor um, period wear and so knickers and shorts, which are designed for different kinds of sports. So we have from like a games range to an equestrian range, etc. So they're all cut and tailored for comfort. Periods can really affect the way you play and it's not talked about enough. And that's why we came up with the business idea is because I was a PE teacher for 20 years and the participation rates during girls having their periods was really low and it really affected them, their well-being. It was really sad to see girls not participate in sport because of their periods. So this is where I thought of this product and we researched and we found um, a way that we could get around this, that they are able to play sport with no problems. It takes that worry away from them. And also the reason for starting it was because of my own girls and I didn't want them to have to go through the issues that I went through when playing um, elite sport with, you know, having those problems of your period stopping you really and the embarrassing moments that lots of girls and women will talk about. Can you tell us a bit more about the research that you did? We had lots of prototypes made. Um, it's very technical, uh, the materials we use, etc. And we sent them to different athletes in different areas and they did lots of kinds of agility, movement, sprinting, jumping, you know, so we could get it right. So it was completely cut. They'd say, you know, it's too tight here. It's not enabling me to jump. Um, it'd be better like this. So we worked a lot with different athletes to get it right. And it, it's taken about two years. And then with COVID as well, to launch a business, it's been quite difficult. But the uptake's been brilliant because I think we've got a product that for, you know, for women is a game changer. So the technology we have, we have something called silver, which makes us completely unique in the um, underwear and the shorts, which is antibacterial and it has no odour, which again is something that when we researched and we did our market research, women were quite embarrassed of. So that takes away all those kind of worries. Um, It's organic cotton, um, so it's really nice to feel. Um, it's not a cheap product. There are a lot, you know, cheaper on the market out there, but we've gone for quality and we've gone for the fact that when you are playing sport, you will sweat, you know, it can be uncomfortable and we hope this just takes all of those issues away. And a sustainable product. And yes. one that you're manufacturing in the UK. We are well. indeed, which was very important to us to make sure that it was made in the UK, which is quite difficult and it's quite expensive, but it's something that we definitely wanted to keep going with and I'm so pleased we have now. Um, it's obviously COVID has been quite difficult, but the communication we have and we're giving back to a British industry, which I think is very important. And we also get our materials from small businesses, um, in the UK. 
So yeah, so we're probably the only period wear manufacturers in the UK that do everything here. We've got lots more in the development side coming out, so that'll be um, interesting. But no, I think it is something that is sustainable. You know, it's very eco-friendly. Um, you don't have to have that many, so we're saving, you know, saving money as well for a lot of children, which we found a lot of young athletes, believe it or not, were, were struggling with period poverty. And that was another thing, you know, in, in the PE office, we used to have a box with sanitary um, wear for them. But with something like this, they can have and they can keep and they'll just wash them and they can last for two years. So why enter the partnership with London Pulse? I'm a netballer myself, so obviously um, it's in me. I love it. It's, you know, it's part of my life. I coach still and I did play to a high level. Um, but with Pulse, it was so important to me to find a link and work with the club. I mean, I love their diversity, their inclusivity, um, how they connect with the community, just that it's got a real family feel as a club and they've been so supportive of a small business like myself. So supportive, not only Sam and the management, but the players. And I just incredibly feel lucky that I have that support from them because, you know, they're a fantastic club. They're in London, they're where I'm from. And it just ticked every box when we were talking. I thought, God, this is a fantastic opportunity. And of course, a fantastic opportunity to partner up with Girls on the Pathway because we know they've got hundreds of teenage girls coming through hoping to make it into Super League. Yes, they do. And I'm, I'm very lucky because I'm one of the hub coaches, so, um, which was a coinc completely coincidental when the, uh, my company and Pulse got together. Um, we didn't actually know that at the start. Um, but it's for, to see the players um, wearing them for, for me is fantastic. And to hearing their feedback is just phenomenal. And knowing they're playing and they feel a lot more secure in them. And, um, you know, they're training every day. They work so, their work ethic is so hard. And periods were something that could stop that. And I'm fortunate with the feedback that they've told me that they've really worked, they've been great. Again, game changing for them. So really, really happy and just, just feel incredibly lucky, like I say, to be working with a club like Pulse. Yes, important, isn't it, to reiterate that your products, this partnership, it's being worn by players at the Copper Box week in, week out. Yeah, which again, you just, you know, a big smile when you see that because you just think, and when they report back afterwards and they've said, oh yeah, and I'm like, brilliant, that's great. It's all I want, you know. Is it's helped you. We talked about it being a business, a small business, but this is a societal issue, isn't it? You talk about period poverty. That's a huge issue for so many young women out there right now. Yeah, and it's not talked about enough. And, um, and there are a lot of male coaches in the netball world now and in other areas of sport coaching women. And so one of the things we've been doing as a company as well is um, partnering with um, male coaches so we can give, make them informed and, you know, and that it should be spoken about because it can really affect, the period can really affect a girl or woman's, you know, life during that time. That's an actual fact. So, um, yeah, we've, we've, we've been very informative to a lot of people and, and a lot, it's great that a lot of male coaches have been talking about it with their players and, you know, trying to take that embarrassment away. We're also working on sometimes a change of kit because a lot of women footballers that we work with have to wear white shorts. And they were just saying, this has just been awful for us wearing white shorts, but it's how they approach the subject. So we've been working with changing the kit, etc. cetera. Um, yeah, so it, it's, it's been a start of a really good journey. And I think we're opening up a lot of um, unanswered questions. And what's your message to listeners to the podcast, young girls listening? Is it not to be embarrassed? There's solutions to some of the challenges they're facing? Yeah, and you shouldn't let a period get in the way of your life. And unfortunately, that it does. And it's very difficult to explain that to some people. But it does affect them. It does affect, like I said, their well-being, their participation, you know. And it's something that this product, well, we feel, can definitely change that. And um, hence the reason I'm so passionate about it, because I've seen with my own daughter you know, how she's managed to continue with her sport and not worry about anything. So if it's working at home here, I think, you know, fortunately it's working with all the other girls that I get the feedback from and their parents. And also, like I say, the elite athletes as well. Great to hear from Vanessa speaking to Michael. 
she's right, this should not be a taboo subject. It's part of everyday life for all of our athletes. It's our philosophy at London Pulse that netball is for everybody. This includes young females who are grappling with the impact of periods on their bodies and their performance. And with the help of people like Vanessa, her Iceni co-founder Francesca, and also our kit manufacturer, the female-focused Flyhawk, who we'll hear from in a moment, we need to keep telling women and girls that their periods and body shape should not be a barrier to sport participation. My name is Lindsay Keeble and I'm a London Pulse netball player. And I have been at Pulse for two years and hopefully going to be there for my third year. I have been in the Netball Super League for, well, this will be my 15th season. Uh, I've also played for England previously. So I've been in the netball world for a very, very long time. I think playing in your teenage years is really crucial. For me personally, I have been blessed with being very tall. And for me, playing netball meant I hung out with more tall women and it felt really normal, felt really um almost short which was great so for me it was definitely an identity thing that helped me uh feel that I fitted in and had sort of a belonging somewhere and wasn't abnormal wasn't different wasn't odd so I think that was really important for me I think other people at teenage years is also to keep fit and healthy like me personally I really enjoy sport and very competitive so netball was definitely something that I could chat with my friends as well as be really competitive on the court and I was very best that I got to a point where I started to really see um, all the training was paying off with my skills and I was being selected for under 17s for England and I was just absolutely rocketing through sort of club promotions and things like that so it was a crucial time for me but I also see it's a really detrimental time for others because you know teenagers are trying to find themselves they're trying to identify their well place in the world and everything that and sport can be really good at opening up new groups of friends new areas and just you know there's so many out there after watching the Paralympics and the Olympics you know there's just so many to choose from it's quite it's quite competitive just in like trying to get an audience so I think it's really crucial for our teenagers to find something that they really enjoy and that's got to be the crucial element you continue because you enjoy it and you like it having your period whilst playing is you know it's quite hard work some people it's affects far more than others you know I used to have friends that were put in bed I've got others who doesn't really affect them at all I think it's definitely something that's very individual to you as an athlete and I know the research has been going on to sort of tailor training tailor performances due to sort of when your menstrual cycle is like teaming up to, with you so obviously you can't dictate when a competition is happening however there are obviously marvel and medicine things that you can take and do to try and affect it but it's quite mad to think that females have to do hormonal treatments to try and stop something that's so natural as men just don't have that issue that that's not something they ever have to think about they're like oh yeah I'm due on tomorrow and oh I'm playing in the world cup final Mm, how am I going to manage this so it is definitely something to to really focus on and having your period is just another thing you have to keep a hold of and there's so many apps out there that are fantastic at really making sure that they know or can predict quite accurately when you're due on so you can prepare as the best possible but obviously stresses and strains and different things all like to meddle in to make things life more difficult and pop in when you don't or don't expect it so it's definitely keeps you on your toes it's hard and it's something that isn't really spoken about because you know you're more lethargic you're more prone to injury very exhausting draining and it's something that you have extra preparation for and extra things you have to do to make sure that the day goes more smoothly so yeah it does suck a bit but you know we're women we can multitask we can deal with it we are really blessed to have two amazing products. Iceni and Flyhawk are both driven by female uh, CEOs and you know creators, so they know exactly what we want and they are super super on it with what our needs are, what our must are, the comfort as well. Like I remember being a young person, and you know I've got thirty six inside. Like you don't have kit that fits you. You'd have to have men's, and they're not designed in the same way. They're not, you know, a comfortable fit. You know. And that is something that Flyhawk definitely has promoted. They've got really good sizing, massive size, short size. Females come in all different shapes and sizes and they're brilliant. And I've seen it again. They've given us products that we can use in a really active way. You know, you've got underwear that you can just slip on. You don't have to worry about leaks or anything like that. And they're fantastic. They're super comfy. And, you know, it's just an absolute dream as an athlete. You know, you're not under any other pressure. You can just go out and deliver your performance. You don't need to worry about anything else going on, which is great. 
the classic line is feel good look good play good and that is for everyone now you could be an absolute monday night league with your mates division 12 or you could be an elite athlete going to the olympics you know that is something that you must have which is comfort it's definitely something that is crucial to your performance whether it's the most serious thing you do or the most fun thing you're doing and it's really important that it, it does the job and flyhawk and i see you do both of those things they deliver on comfort as well as performance which is brilliant you can't ask for anything more really this is Centre Pass from London Pulse. As we said in episode one of the podcast, we place great importance on our role away from the netball court and recognise our wider responsibility in instilling a love of sport and the benefits it can bring, which is why I'm thrilled with our three-year partnership with Flyhawk, the brand new female focused teamwear production company. John has been to meet with founder Stephanie Essex. One of the main things that is especially unique about Flyhawk is uh, we're female focused um, as well as being female founded um, and being predominantly a a teamwear brand. um, I think we're actually one of the only teamwear brands that has female sport as its primary focus. Um, It's quite typical for um, teamwear brands to be predominantly either maybe football focused or hockey focused or rugby focused. Um, and if they're a multi-sports brand, netball is very often um, a bolt-on sport or a secondary sport. So it's not, it's not the primary um, focus for them, but that's where we differ as a brand. Um, we are all guns blazing in netball. Um, we, we eat, sleep, drink netball in terms of what we, you know, thinking about products. Our customers are all a netball based. So um, what that also then means is, you know, every time we're thinking about products in terms of product development, it's all going into netball, thinking about what do the athletes actually want to wear? You know, what are the physiques of netballers? Um, and that's where I'd say we, we mainly differ, just that we are doubling down on the sport of netball. And uh, I don't believe anyone has really done that before, certainly not in the United Kingdom. It seems obvious as a good idea, but how did it come about? Yeah, I mean, it seems obvious when you look at the stats. So 20 million people play netball worldwide and you kind of go, well, it's a little bit strange that we've we've got a, a there's a netball brand that exists in terms of equipment you know gilbert but there's not really anyone else and um there's kind of a, a bit of a one horse race which you don't have in any other sport particularly when there are 20 million people playing it um so how it kind of came about um i'm a former super league netballer um got a huge passion for for women's sport um for the last decade or so i've i've worked in sportswear and, and teamwear primarily in those sort of multi sports brands i've talked about so i've got a good understanding of how they operate uh, how the business model works um i i took a bit of um time out from the sportswear industry after the company that i was working for was acquired um and i decided there was kind of a natural point to step away from the brand after 10 years or so um i'd kind of achieved everything i could in that role um, so I took a bit of a, a time out, managed to actually grab a, a holiday before lockdown uh, in March 2020, which was quite lucky. And just during that time, kind of just noticed some things popping up on Twitter, people trying to look for kit, uh, some female coaches and PE teachers realising that this big piece about how hard it was just to get some coaching shorts for them to go back to school in. And you kind of go... At the time, I was thinking, it's 2020. This just shouldn't really be a thing. Um, so then I just thought, if anyone's going to do it, I've I've got the skill set. I've I've got the connections within netball and and knowing people across both grassroots and through to elite level. Um, and just thought, yeah, why not? Let's let's give it a bash and let's launch a, a sportswear brand in a pandemic, which seems a bit bonkers. But uh, yeah, we're we're getting there. It's all all seems to be uh, falling into place slowly but surely. So it became apparent, even in a pandemic, that you could start this business and you are effectively a success of the COVID pandemic. I think what what maybe the period afforded me was just probably extra time in terms of because everything ground to a halt. Um, a lot of people were online, I think, voicing their opinions and their thoughts, which maybe they wouldn't necessarily have been doing because ordinarily you'd be at training with your mates and say, I can't get hold of this. So because people are all locked up, you know, they they turn to platforms such as, you know, Instagram or or Twitter. So I probably actually was able to do a lot more listening than or in an, a normal period, you know, where we're not we're not in lockdown. Um so that was that's the first thing. Um the second thing was the lockdown period also I think 
people have now, are now coming out the other side and they want something a bit different. So they're looking actually for a new brand anyway. And if uh, that happens to be Flyhawk, you know, you know, then great. So we've also made the, the business model really streamlined. It's really digital. So just looking into things like our supply chain, making sure, you know, it's 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 kind of bulletproof where possible, um, where perhaps other companies, you know, would have had a huge headcount because we're digital business model or the staff we've set it up so our team can work remotely we're not reliant on you know huge offices um huge warehousing it is quite a lean business model and we were able to look at where our company's now struggling because we've gone into lockdown let's do the opposite of that and make it as possible as as much as possible we can covid proof uh, i i guess um i think a lot of people are probably doing that now switching to online uh thinking about how they take you know transactions how they deal with customers um so because we've been able to build from the ground up thinking at the back of our minds we might go into lockdown any minute i hope we hope we don't again but because we've planned for that um hopefully it means that we'll be a bit more resilient should should anything like this happen again it may seem a really obvious question but what benefit does it give you that a kit is designed by women for women i think it's just that understanding of knowing when um, a female puts on a piece of clothing, what are the bits that they're going to go to first? So simple things like on our leggings, we've got a, you know, a nice high waist um, because we know that, that we want that to be really comfy. We want it to you know, hide any sort of lumps and bumps or, or whatnot. Equally, we've got the experience of when something hasn't been quite right and it's not been like entirely comfortable. So it's quite hard to get... Um, you know, tracksuit bottoms the right length from you know generic suppliers. So um, it's probably that we we understand also how products need to move, so where they need to stretch and flex a bit more because um, not all females have the same you know chest or the same quad sizes. It's, it it really does does vary. Um, with guys, obviously, you know, um, having dealt with rugby clubs before, it's a lot more kind of straightforward in the sizing because guys know, yep, yeah, I'm a. 34 inch waist and I'm a 42 inch chest and if they get get that then they're yeah but you're away then they're happy with it whereas uh with women um there's a lot more things to consider uh because a size 12 fits people that consider themselves a size 12 very very kind of differently so you need to make sure that there's kind of um give in certain places of products and um not give in other parts where there needs to be support so tell us how the partnership came about with london pulse and also the interesting bit where they say that they feel that they will work well with you because the deal is not just a kit it it, it encompasses the whole club effectively yeah obviously you know being able to observe how a lot of the super league clubs kind of uh, responded during first lockdown um, and London Pulse was was on our radar because of how proactive they were. Um, they recognised that, you know, this was going to go on for a while and managed to engage all of their athletes uh, from elite through to, the, you know, the pathways um, very, very quickly online um, and were perhaps one of the most vocal clubs in terms of um, being positive and being proactive and saying, well, we can still get sponsor- sponsors on board. We've, we've still got platforms. We've still got databases. Um, let's make sure that we come out the other side of this even stronger. Um, and I think they certainly have, you know, under Sam's leadership and the, and the wider team, um, the likes of, you know, Claire work looking after the, the sponsors and partners and, and Emma on social. And um, I feel like they've got a really good footing now in terms of, a huge range of partners they've got so many I don't know how they manage them all um but that was what caught our eye in terms of being proactive rather than um the kind of woe is me approach and because as a sponsor if if a a super league club is saying we don't know if we're going to come out the other side well I'm definitely not putting any money towards that because I think I'm going to lose it so if you get confidence from, you know, like like we did from London Pulse and from Sam saying, no, we are, we're strong here. We're coming out the other side um, and we're coming out even bigger and better Then straight away as a sponsor or someone looking to, you know, work with a club like that. You, you have that confidence. Um, so that was a real difference for us. Um, and in terms of the wider partnership, you're absolutely right. It's not just kit. It's looking at 
we work with London Pulse on the, the wider brand and how, you know, we can support them with additional things such as, you know, the website and the marketing um, and creative ideas such as, you know, photo shoots and just uh, bringing the whole sort of London Pulse brand together so that actually the kit ties in with the brand messaging and the social media. It's not just we don't just drop off kit once a year and say, you know, best of luck, hope it all goes well, we might might pop down to a game. It's very uh, all encompassing and 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 intense. They are they work at a obscene rate, the London Pulse guys. It's um I don't don't know how they do it, but uh yeah, they they're great fun and it's it's good to have that relationship where we can bounce ideas back and forth on on WhatsApp or we can just pick up the phone and have a quick chat. Um because that also creates, you know, speed of decision making and um, we can get stuff done very quickly as well. So, um, yeah, really enjoying the partnership with, with London Pulse and uh, looking forward to what, what next season brings. One of the topics of the podcast this episode has been about women and girls competing in sport. You would hope that Flyhawk would play a part in keeping people, females, playing sport. A- absolutely. And something that we really want to do with our product range is we we don't want to just be seen as a, a kind of a team wear brand that... that, that only does the team kits that's why we've kind of worked with elite athletes and um international netballers so you know Serena Guthrie uh, Natalie Haythornthwaite uh, Stacey Francis and Jade Clark you know players that are internationally renowned netball wise role models for women's sport but we've worked with those guys to create a collection of products that they like want to train in um, and we sell those to individuals you know on on the online shop because the idea is we kind of we need to make sure that women and girls, particularly in that kind of that teenage age group where the, the, that drop off is, we need to make sure that the kit or the uniform isn't one of the barriers of them making them feel like, oh, I don't really like what I have to wear for this sport. So I'm going to now just dip out and I'm going to go do something else. Um, so if they see that actually the, there's nice kit that you can wear for netball and it's, it's really comfortable um then I think that's something that helps um, equally just raising the profile in terms of, you know, our personality on social media. It's very fun. It's bubbly. It's engaging with that that audience. Um, we don't take ourselves too, too seriously. Uh, you know, having that kind of brand personality that would fit straight into a team um, is, is exactly how we want to be seen on social media. You know, under that kind of character in a squad, I guess, that kind of rallies the troops and uh, organises the socials and the nights out and brings together everyone that's how we want to be seen as a brand so that it, that gives girls you know confidence that even if they've got product suggestions can just drop us a, a dm on social media like have you thought about this um and we do get suggestions um and we do listen to them and it, it goes into all of our product development for you know the next products that come out brings me on to a blog that i read um about the netball dress or shorts and tops what is the best way, and, and I assume it's personal choice, but I suppose this is what you're saying, that you're you're trying to give netball the currency that it needs. Yeah, and I think this potentially even leads on to, you know, bigger conversations um, as to how we, we get more um, guys playing netball and there's more ne- mixed netball because I do think that will become a factor if we do want to get netball into the Olympics. Um, but just maybe... Um, you know, we need to offer a wider choice of of uniform. So potentially a, a team could all be in very similar kit and in the same colours with the same logos. But a couple of those players might choose to wear a vest and leggings to play in rather than a dress if they don't feel comfortable in a dress. And I think it's opening up the sport so that particularly at social level, I think at elite level, the dress is a really important thing and players aspire, to, you know, to wear the dress um, but at grassroots level, you know, if you're playing down in a local league on a Tuesday night and it's freezing cold outside, um, then I think if we allow players, as long as they all look smart and they're all in, you know, a version of the kit, if there's a mix and match option, then why not? Then surely if it's all about getting people to, to play and we can't have, you know, league rules saying you must wear this, you know, you must be in a dress and you can't wear leggings. Um that's just ridiculous because we're not helping ourselves as a sport if we kind of inflict those those kind of rules and regulations. Equally, it might be that in mixed netball teams, we start to get more of a, a kit that can kind of go across, you know, men's and women's, like a vest and a short option, um, rather than necessarily the guys being in vests and shorts and the, and the, the ladies being in, in dresses. I think we need to think about it much more as 
players sh- should be able to play in what they feel most comfortable in. Um, and hopefully um, that will, you know, prevent some people from, from dropping off from the sport. But I do think the netball dress will still still be um, the most popular item. We did a poll actually um, last week on social media. I think we had about 500 votes. Uh, the netball dress came out at 80% as still being the preferred option, um, but it's not 100%. So we need to also make sure we're catering for the other 20%. Now, you mentioned the big O word. You're a former player. How important would it be for netball to be in Brisbane 2032, which is what they're saying? The Olympics, netball, Australia, which, of course, we know is synonymous with netball as well. How realistic is it? And as you mentioned, does it have to involve the men as well, a mixed team or a mixed event at some point? Yeah, there's so much discussion about it at at the moment. I would love to see it at the 2032 Olympic Games. I think Brisbane realistically is probably one of the best shots um, to to do it because Australia being the host nation. Um, Not being in the Olympics at the moment does feel like a bit of a gaping hole in the sport when you you consider how many people play globally. Um, Equally, what it could then do for the sport to elevate it, you know, being Olympic sport, the additional sponsorships it would bring in, um, the additional competition it would add within a four year year cycle. I think it was Bethany, the president of Netball France, put out a really interesting uh, tweet the other day. And it was we need to stop just seeing barriers and just think these are just hurdles we need to jump over and let's just find solutions because um so we need kind of problem solvers behind it to kind of go, OK, what if this is the problem? Let's find a solution to that. Um, and if it is a version which maybe is slightly more different to fit in with the competition, um, then let's be flexible as a sport. You know, let's because there are only benefits to come, I think, from being in the Olympics. Um, I think it'd be really challenging to try and pick a, yeah, a Team GB squad, however, because there's an awful lot of talent, you know, uh, across the the whole of Great Britain but uh yeah that that wouldn't be my problem so uh, but yeah I'd love to see I'd love to see it in the Olympics well we'll keep our fingers crossed for that let's just get back to Flyhawk to finish you've got a three-year partnership with London Pulse where do you see Flyhawk in that period and the and the partnership going from there um I think next year is going to be really exciting hopefully we can now get fans back into stadiums and then that obviously naturally leads on to to other things more people being able to physically you know see and touch the kit rather than just seeing you know it all online and ordering and ultimately hoping for the best um <laughs> whilst um I COVID is hopefully subsiding. Um, we can then hopefully push on with our international plans. I think just keeping on on the same path that we are now, growing really organically, spreading the the Flyhawk word across the the UK in particular. Um, we're very committed to our partnership with with London Pulse, Pulse and seeing you know what can come off the back of that in the next couple of years. Um, we're absolutely building a brand that we want to be here uh, beyond our lifetime, certainly, but, but be known as that kind of legacy brand for netball. As you heard from Steph, the partnership extends much beyond the supply of kit for both parties. And that really appeals to us as we're both committed to raising the bar for netball. Sam, Steph also discussed the Olympics and netball being part of it in the future. As a former player and now CEO of London Pulse, what do you think? Well, my view is that absolutely it should be in Brisbane 2032. It's long overdue. Netball is a global sport. It's one of the strongest female sports in the world. And it's long overdue. And most athletes um, that play netball would absolutely love for the, the Olympics to be the pinnacle of their career. And you might argue that there's no better place to start than doing it in Australia. I do remember, um, and those older listeners will also remember, when the Olympics was in Sydney, and I was actually really hopeful as a as a young athlete then myself that the, um, Australia would put netball in at that point. And I remember being absolutely devastated that they put ballroom dancing in instead. And um, that's no disrespect to ballroom dancing, but as a young aspiring netballer, um, I was pretty shocked that, that that sort of got the nod over netball. So... I don't think we can take anything for granted. Um, I do think that the response this time, though, from those key individuals in Australia and right from the CEO of Australia Netball all the way through to all the Suncorp teams, the fans, there is a drive for netball to be put into the Olympics when they get the opportunity to do that. So I'm much more hopeful this time round and it's really important that globally netball fans and netball participants push for netball to be an allocated sport. 
it just drives the next generation of interest to come and see what our game's about. Come to London and the Copper Box, which is on the Olympic Park, and that's part of our Olympic legacy, and to connect netball with the London Olympics and to see netball being on the Olympic stage would just be absolutely fantastic for um, not only international competition, but national level, which is where ultimately these athletes are found and nurtured. And that's it for another edition of Centre Pass from London Pulse. Thanks to all my guests and to you for your continued support. Please download and follow to ensure you will automatically hear our next episode coming soon.